Good evening, everyone. Thank you all for attending this very exciting meeting of the Woodstock Planning and Zoning Commission. August 3rd, 2023. <clears throat> call the meetings in order at I have 739. Is that good with you, Amy? Yes. <clears throat> uh, we'll start with a roll call. Tim, would you mind starting us off? Tim Young. Joseph Adeletta. Doug Porter. Sid Lodgett. Jeffrey Marcotte. Mark, can you hear us? Yeah, I'm here. Mark Blackburn. I am here. All the next it doesn't appear we have any. We do have a forum, so Doug, congratulations. Thank you for coming tonight. Takes us to the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. Please be your father, which is the same as the nation, the flag, and the reason for liberty and justice for all. Moving very long. Take us to agenda item from the number one to two. That's the chair. The chair isn't here. <laughs> um, I'd like to wish everybody a happy August. And I'd like to say that there's only 229 more days until spring. Just a short touch. You know, Joe, my um, one of my favorite days of the year is the first day of winter. Oh. And that's because the days start getting long, getting longer. We've lost a lot of time since mm -hmm. June first, uh, yeah. June twenty first. Mm -hmm. so. Item number three: citizens' comments. Anybody would like to add to? Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, number one. So Amy and her Amy on the WYNY Facebook page here today. I don't think there are any mm -hmm. using. Mm -hmm. There weren't any bad hits, right? Yeah, I'm not involved in it. Oh, I guess that's the next video. I'm sorry. That's, that's the next agenda item. I don't know of any um, formal application permit applications to review, so but it takes care of the agenda item. Or, well, somebody has a comment on it. Probably you, you wouldn't have the information yet about the updated uh, application for last year. Okay. Sorry, Joe. Yeah. Okay. Okay.
like waiting for a moment. Paint the drum. Mm, 745. There we go. Mm Seven forty five. I guess we can open the special on the uh, public hearing for application SP six five eight dash zero six dash two three. The cream sheds and barns on public hearing is eight three twenty three, which is today, and it's advertised in the Woodstock village you're on. 721, 23, and 728 on its screen. Well, I don't have a checklist or anything, so I'm going to wing it. Um, I'm going to ask for the record. Complete and like have the all the fees been paid. I do not handle the fees, but have you paid your fees? Yes, we have. As far as my understanding, it's it's um, complete. May anyone look from the commission like to speak or get to the applicant? Okay. Um, would the applicant would like to speak? Yes, sir. Please you state your name? Yes, sir. Uh, for, the for the record, I'm Norm Tebow. I'm a licensed professional engineer with Killingly Engineering Associates. Uh, I am here uh, representing the applicant this evening, uh, Supreme Sheds and Barns. Uh, the owner's uh, name is Andrew Godwa, actually the uh, the operator of the business. Uh, the property in which this is located on uh, is the property in which the uh, Scranton shop are also located on. Um, it is owned by uh, Richard and Deb Nielsen, um, who have um, signed the application as the owners of the property. Um, so um, as you know, um, I, I, I believe that, uh, that the applicant was here previously to um, operate a business on this property. Um, it's my understanding that uh, their explanation of the business at that time was uh, they were going to display a few sheds and, and most of the um, uh, construction slash manufacturing or, or building of the sheds would, would, was going to be substantially off-site. Um, but um, I'm sure um, anyone who's driven by there has, has seen that there are um, numerous sheds in various degrees of completion. Uh, that are um, in full view of the roadway. Um, they are within the um, 75 foot front yard setback. And um, uh, the purpose of this application, uh, number one is to kind of set some limits as to what they can do out there um, and um, explain to the commission, you know, what we are proposing as far as um, kind of cleaning things up a little bit and make it a little more presentable um, as uh, this is a, uh, a uh, scenic highway that uh, that this business is located on. Uh, the picture you have in back of you, um, at the time we did the survey, uh, toward the bottom of the picture, you can see the uh, the uh, blue uh, rectangles, and those were the locations of um, of uh, five uh, different sheds, uh, several of them under construction, and a couple of them that were completed. And um, so um, after speaking with Delia, uh, meeting with her, um, also meeting with my client and explaining to him uh, what, what the issues were, um, 
you know, and I'm, I don't think anything he he's done is, is been intentional. Um, it's just that I think things have gone a little better than he thought. And he just started assembling sheds on, on site a little bit more than he should. So um, what we're showing, uh, you can see the, um, uh, the, the six sort of orange rectangles that we have in a row there. And those are and those are the proposed locations where they'll be able to do display. And those are at the 75 foot uh, setback line. Uh, we are proposing to set uh, monuments at each end uh, of, that, um, of that line so that uh, there is a, a defined uh, limit as to where he can put the sheds. Um, we're showing six, obviously, if they're, if they're smaller, then he could probably put a couple more. Um, if they're larger, they will be less. But uh, the intention of that is to be for is is for display uh, in that area, and they will be set back uh, substantially further from the road uh, than than the sheds are right now. Up toward the top right hand side of the uh, of the screen, uh, there is a uh, an, an area that's uh, outlined in a green dashed line, uh, and that is the area that we're proposing where he could actually uh, construct sheds. Um, if you were to do it on site, uh, that that uh, area is completely screened from the road uh, due to the terrain. Um, it's set back about 10 to 12 feet lower uh, than the top of the hill. Uh, you cannot see the roadway from there. The roadway cannot see back there. And I think anyone who's driven by, you can barely see um, in the buildings that are back there. And this is located uh, pretty much in back of those buildings and about four feet lower in the terrain. So. Uh, that's uh, that's the proposal uh, to essentially uh, you know create some sort of a sense of order uh, for the business and uh, give him some some limits and some boundaries where he can act actually operate so that uh, the uh, uh, the sheds and uh, and the building materials aren't just haphazardly thrown around the site in full view of people passing by. I may note that uh, the uh, we did uh, notify uh, abutting property owners within 500 feet. Um, the uh, uh, cards uh, were turned into the town after that happened. Uh, the, the the sign uh, notice notification of the public hearing was was posted in front of the site in a timely manner as well. Thank you, Mr. Seymour. Any of the commissioner have uh, questions? Yeah. yeah, what's going to be done with that building site, being that it's lower and familiar with the terrain behind there, uh, being fairly what what's going to be done with that to uh, see what they can operate when we have weather like this and not be back up front again uh, because it's too muddy up there. Well, that that particular area is is pretty is pretty compact. Uh, as you as you go further back, it gets a little soupier and softer and softer terrain. Uh, but we we did choose that area because it is right in, right off of the uh, the gravel driveway back there. It's it's it is a pretty um, it's a grassed surface, uh, but um, underfoot uh, it is pretty solid in comparison to yeah, as you go back further in the site. It does get rather soupy back there. So no plans are made to strip it off. And no. Put it no, they uh, they're they're just uh, you know they're they may have a you know three four or five sheds or something going back there. It's not like we've got um, uh, large vehicles uh, going back there. Uh, they may bring a truck back there when they if they're if they build a shed back there and they want to uh, deliver it to a customer. Uh, they've actually got a flatbed that uh, uh, that the the bed sort of extends down so they can drag it up on that flatbed. Yes, uh, just a couple of questions. Uh, mm -hmm. One of the times driving by, it looked like, uh, at least from the road, one of the buildings was a stained color. So I just want to ask if there's any intention of staining or painting some of the sheds. Uh, it's not explained in the narrative, which is fine. Uh, yeah, um, quite honestly, I, I I didn't even notice that because uh, I know that you know the sheds that I saw in the construction that we were out there, they were all just all natural board and batten. Right. So um, if there are some restrictions or limitations that the, the commission feels 
uh, would be appropriate. Uh, we, would, uh, you know, certainly, uh, if you wanted to condition something uh, with with that stipulation, we we have no objection to that. I think that would be important to make a note of. I mean, if the customer wanted to stay, then it would be staying at the site was delivered or something. Sure, I I, I agree. Yeah. Okay, so that so. Um, the uh, banner said when you get back to the applicant for sign signage, part of our regulation says sign size allowances. Right. So um, they so didn't. Them. They didn't mention anything about the, the sign uh, at the time when I when I discussed this. Uh, but uh, um, I did. I did actually speak um, uh, to Devin Richard this afternoon. Um, you know, explain to them that uh, you know if you know if the commission chose to approve this application, then your tenant has to abide by the rules. Um, you know, so you, you know, it's, it's kind of your obligation to, to enforce it. They assured me they will. And I did explain to them that if he were to put up a sign, I know he doesn't have one right now, but um, he would have to uh, meet the sign regulations of the town and, and, uh, and apply for it uh, to, to put up uh, an appropriate sign. What I wanted to make clear, make sure that the uh, applicant uh, is aware that signs like that take look sign that's considered a sign and that okay. would be considered part of the square footage plow. Okay. So just to be aware that uh, it exceeds that allowance in the regulation. I'm not sure what qualifies this is a sign. I missed what you said. The so the banners. The uh, banner. Banners. The, the, the big vertical banner with right. that says, yeah, I know what you're about. Yes. Um, you know that the intent, the intention, those highlighted, those six orange here, is displayed there. At the original location. Right. Would they be intended to be sold, or would they truly? They, they, they could be sold from there if, if I, I would imagine, like uh, for instance, at the end of the season, if, if it were, yeah. if they were approaching, if they were approaching winter, uh, and someone said, I, you know. I like a, a shed in that style, or like that that particular shed. At that time, it could re be removed for the site, so it doesn't have to sit there over the winter. Um, or if they did sell it off there, it would have to be replaced in kind. But uh, the, like I said, the intention um, is really to kind of demonstrate the the available styles, uh, and, sure. and not that those would be the only ones that they would have available. I mean, I know that they do have these loose leaf binders with pictures that they show uh, customers. And, and they do larger uh, sheds and barns on properties as well. I'd, I'd like to, if we can, as part of our conditions of approval, use the same language that we had in the original application, which was, I think, a number of uh, display sheds with uh, no more than six or I think 1,200 square feet in total. If uh, the applicant wanted to have two or three really big ones instead of six, whatever the combination is six, no more than six and no greater than 1200 square feet in total. And um, I guess all I wanna say is that I'm glad finally after almost three years of not compliance, the applicant is working to get compliance with the town regulation. Well, they, you know, and I, you know, and when they did, uh, first contact us. It was, it was probably you know three to four months ago, but it was you know the beginning of the summer. We were just swamped, and we got to it as quickly as we could. Right. Yeah, I'll see the security. So uh, that was it. Thank you, gentlemen. Okay. Is there? Can, there's no um, concern of ever putting a building out to put tools in or anything like that. Uh, no, they right right now right, right now they're on um, they are renting uh, that. Sort of oddly shaped building on the left, off the off the driveway. There, they've got an office in there, and they keep tools in that particular building. Well, they do have some small covered storage buildings. It looks like near where they're constructing the current. Right. Shed. Those those would have to be lo relocated. And re so there would be some small. If I don't know if, out buildings I don't know if they're out buildings or just sort of like awnings or coverings yeah. that they yeah. that they. That they put up, I I don't think they're permanent structures, but they'd be back in manufacturing. Yeah, they, 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 the they permit would to... indicate that there would be no, yeah, no no permanent structures. Correct, yeah. no buildings. Correct. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, oops, Timo, your plan shows to the right or north of the six as a well. Mm -hmm. It says C note 10, number 10. That is a typo. I, I don't see any note number 10 on the class anymore. Uh, maybe it may be left over from a previous plan. Yeah, yeah. Please make that correction. Right. You can see uh, my rest, it is. Uh, also, uh, again, sounds minor, but the, the, the site plan will be part of the permanent record of the approval that other planning commissions can refer back to. Yeah, they get filed on the record. My one gets filed on the plan records. Okay. Because of that, can, uh, I believe the four hemlocks you have identified or actually hickories, can you please change okay. those? Yeah, okay. not for our benefit, but you know, 10, 15 years down the line, that might be uh, helpful. Uh, I support Joe's comment about a maximum of six sheds or 1,200 square feet. I know there are six shown on the site plan, but I believe you said it could be more. And at that point, with just that line, right. you were essentially saying that an unlimited number of sheds can be displayed behind it. So I too yeah, am. If you want to set that limit, certainly. Certainly. Well, I think the 1,200 square feet would really kind of put a kibosh on things as well you know that that 1200 square feet is a hard number um and then you mentioned the monumentation again for the future commissioner's benefit if things have to be checked you identified two at least one yeah. uh you yeah. say provide monumentation on the revised site plan can you please determine what kind whether you know, looking at your legend whether it's an iron pin a drill hole CHG, whatever that is, monument. Yeah, and those uh, those would be associated with the property. We we would we were opposed to put a concrete monument, not a I think uh something like uh you know a three quarter inch iron pin that you would use for a property boundary, it would get it, it would get destroyed or or you know or buried. Uh, I think if, if we did a uh, an, a good visible concrete monument that you'd use set, for instance for like roadway construction. Uh, would be a, a good hard boundary uh, that would get destroyed. Good. Thank you. And just lastly, there's, a da there's some dash lines around four of the six display sheds. It doesn't close. It looks like it goes from the covered workbench around four of the buildings, past the well, and then just kind of stops. Can you explain what that is? Uh, Start through the work head, goes around up over here, then it stops. And I'm just not sure what the purpose of that is. I'm trying to read it myself. I know I had to know I had to find it. I got a hard copy. You said building supplies there. Mm -hmm. the arrow oh, over yeah, here, okay. Right? Yeah, that's where they had that's where they had stockpiles of, of boards and lumber and so forth. That was the limit of where they had things stockpiled. And is that what you're putting? No, we were just showing it as that was the that was where all of that stuff was located when we did it. Okay. Just to show where it was located. So um, that will no longer be there. Okay. So should the site plan the wording be changed so that it doesn't imply the piece of the that needs to be the to be removed? Yeah. To be removed. Yeah. That's it. That's an easy note to add. Because the future CEO may look at the card. Right, okay right. I got you. Mr. Thibault, uh, the applicant can be minimal with not having any building supplies in the 75 foot front setback. Or would he... sure. I mean, if, if they're going to be if they're going to be doing their their assembly or any kind of construction in the back, there would be no need for it. Good. Well, yeah, thank you very much. You're welcome. Oh, uh, I'm sorry. Can I ask one other question? Absolutely. Uh, looking at your project narrative, uh, the third paragraph mm -hmm. is work on the site is typically limited to no earlier than 10 a.m. and not later than 5 p.m. Uh, does that include everything, sales, manufacturing, 
incoming and outgoing deliveries. Yes, yes, everything. Everything. Ten to five. Yeah, ten to five. And and a lot of times, um, you know, from my conversation with uh with uh Richard a couple of days ago, he says a lot of times they don't even show up until noontime to, to do any work. So they're not uh then they're not early risers. Maybe they're in customer sites working on shit. Possibly. And they're not there every day either. Uh, I noticed that uh, the several times I've been out there, uh, I think maybe once or twice there were actually people out there doing work. And other times there was not even anyone there. You don't really have an opinion on this. I just want to raise it to the commission. Uh, we talked about these work hours. You said they're typically limited. Uh, typically, in not suggesting by the south, but it could be used by a future owner mm -hmm. of this property to do the same thing. And nor do I want to hamstring the applicant to, you know, right. you can't start to, you know, he's out there at 959, we're going to slap the wrist. But yeah. So I'm trying to find a word that limits the vast majority of working hours. Yeah. Well, and that's, and that's why I say typically, you know, would there be, you know, occasionally would someone show up on on, on nine o'clock in the morning to pick something up or 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 leave a little bit later? I'm, I'm sure that happens, uh, but typically is uh, you know uh, a, a general I think a general expression because probably ninety to ninety five percent of the time those are the hours that they operate. Thank you. So somebody else was to do. They would have pulled up to go do something else, and somebody else stepped in and did that and said, "Oh, we want to start at eight o'clock." Well, and then, 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 water then coming back for absolutely. I, I would think so. Yeah. I would propose that they don't have to open at eight, but why don't you allow them to be well, open? That's kind of what I'm wondering if we're looking to make this a a cookie cutter type of a thing to allow for. You know, we got enough to do without having to say, hey, they want to, somebody else is doing something down here. We want to change it by two hours. Do we really need to have a public hearing for that? And the hours might be 10 to 5 now, but maybe you yeah. hire someone. I think reasonable. It's a eight, different eight scheduling type. And then when you work at 8 in the morning, you know, yeah. 3 or something. And that's, and that's language we could. It's going to rain from noon on. You, know, you might want to get down there and get something done from eight to noon and get uh, done. No. Don't we have any comments? Oh. Mark, you have a second? Any questions? No, not really. Thank you. I just have a quick question. How will we document? These comments. I see you're writing down a lot of things. The idea you will be... when the public hearing closes, then you yeah you have to go through the criteria, and then if you okay whatever conditions you place, they right. become enforceable. In our next meeting, awesome. <laughs> really? Get her done. Make the motion that we close the public hearing. Second. Mm -hmm. Motion by. I'm sorry. <laughs> Who am I? <laughs> Either. All three of them. Correct. Your second. Joe, Joe, you say second. Before you vote on it, is there any other questions you have about the criteria? Mr. Tebow did include his narrative to address the criteria, but you'll have to go through it when you deliberate for your decision. Okay. I wrote down everything that was suggested. Okay. There's no further discussion. Mr. Wall. Hit me up. Hi. Joe. Hi. 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 Sid Blodgett. Hi. Uh, Jeffrey Morricott. Hi. Mark Blackburn. Hi. 
close the public hearing at 8.09 p.m. Thank you, Mr. Tebow. Thank you. We're doing this would be coming up at the next meeting in August to vote on accepting. Normally, it's listed as business, and then you come back to it. It's not listed that way. Yeah, I guess we have to stay with this. This is not a special meeting because we do these every first Thursday. So if you made a motion to add. I make a motion to add your business to the agenda. That yes, and then you list the application, application, and then you could have your deliberation. Because it should be listed twice, public hearing and then regular. So I make a motion to add as a new business uh, agenda item for consideration of application special permit application six five eight zero six two three spring barns and sheds. Second. All right, so there were a motion by Joe Adeletta to add. Discussion of the permit. Second in my suit. Yeah. Joe, um, so I can write it down. What, what is your your motion again? Actually, to add an agenda item for new business to consider mm -hmm. special application number for Supreme it's the SP. It's, it doesn't say that on the agenda, but it should be SP 658 or 6 23. Okay, so the uh, motion on the table was added agenda item for a new business for application number SP 658 0623 Supreme Sheds and Barn 292 Rule 169. I'll go to the rule. Tim Young. Aye. Going eleven, aye. Going order, aye. Mr. Blackett, aye. Jeffrey Marquardt, aye. Mark Blackmer, aye. Okay. So passes. That brings us to the agenda item. I'm going to call it five B. Make a motion to accept the application on the special permit with conditions uh, to be enumerated. Okay. A motion by Joe. Seconded by Tim. Seconded by, by you, Tim. Yes. Do you want to elaborate on um, conditions? You have to go through the criteria first. What's the criteria before the discussion items? But you're supposed to want to do it before you finish your go. I just want to make sure we got on the record what we were talking <clears throat> about. That no painting or staining of. That will be the have site one condition. That the wall signage requirements are observed. Uh, on the, fi the final plan will be modified to exclude quote note number 10 and the quote just to the well. 
put him at the well? Uh, there's a footnote associated with the well in the drawing, but there's no footnote on the plan. So there's... Oh, that, that's the note number 10. Okay. Yeah, yep. It, is the well there? Or is that yeah, yes, it is. Okay. Uh, well, that's cool. I mean, on site, I know it's on the drawing. Yes. Yes. Yeah. 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 Uh, secondly, the four hemlock trees adjacent to Route 169 can be relabeled as hickory uh, trees. And thirdly, the monumentation identifying now I can see it. my invitation identifying the uh, display area it says the native concrete how about the inside of steep storage yeah and uh fourthly uh leading the area of uh, identifying current. I thought you were going to add to be removed. It says. Yes. The, uh, to be yeah. Are you done? Yeah, I'll say. Wanted to add. More. It's the language that we had before, but for display sheds, uh, no more than six display sheds for 1,200 square feet, Jeffers. You said 1,200? 1,200 square feet. Whichever is less? It's less, yes. And then just uh, at uh, this point, uh, no gravel or hard surface to be installed in the designated manufacturing area. I guess the narrative we got we want to allow 8 a.m. So you're just specifying that not to start earlier than eight, but you're not specifying the end. Oh well, yeah. Want to ask so that means they can't have like the evening when they sell sheds, people could come in after five. Well, we got the impression that they eat to five the time that they make them in time. What would we make them? Said all types of activities making, selling, delivery, shipping. That's what the applicants. Okay. Can I ask one question? Um, actually, a suggestion eight to five, but no Sundays or holidays. Okay. But the is already in there about You mean no permanent building? Is that what you meant? No permanent building? Yeah, no, so buildings drop over the permanent Well, there's a few of the covers were bench. Yeah, right. I get that, but just you know, I could just envision so, like quarter farms that you know, the whole building, I think. Right? So, do you want to specify that all of the tools and workbenches, or maybe just everything to do with assembly, to be relocated to the That's proposed some shed assembly area? Yeah. So, how do you word that? 
and that it shouldn't be a, a given with the removal of this present area and the outlining of the uh, new area. So how about all assembly and associated tools to be relocated to shed assembly area? Is that a per condition? Did we capture everything, Mark? You were taking good notes. Everything, so. everything, that, everything that I have yeah, Thank you. Yeah. Do we, we talk about signage? Yes. So, any signage requires a permit? You want to put that as a condition or not? I thought it would be self evident, but it's hard to reinforce it. I think before you can vote, you have to go through the criteria. <clears throat> if I share in order to do that, mm -hmm. I'm going to try. I only got it through like the third page of book on five. So, <laughs> um, once the commission has found the proposed user activity meets all the following criteria, a special permit shall be approved or approved with modification of the consent. One is in a compliance. It is in compliance with the zoning regulations for the town of Woodstock. It's real clear. It is. It is consistent with the plan of conservation and development and the plan of open space and conservation. It will generate generate minimal offsite adverse impacts from the surrounding area, including but not limited to adverse impacts in the environment, the character of the area, including its natural, historical, and cultural features, property values, and reasonable use, enjoyment, and development of properties. It will neither adversely affect ground or surface waters nor endanger drinking water supplies. It shall have the approval of appropriate agencies such as the NPDH, WPCA, DPH, and DEP for sewage disposal and water service. It does not adversely impact existing traffic conditions, including a finding that streets serving the proposed use or activity are adequate to carry an additional traffic generated by the use or activity, and that no traffic safety problem, e.g. poor sight line, will be caused or significantly aggravated by the use or activity. It will provide uninhindered emergency vehicle access. It will not adversely affect public health, safety, or welfare. It will meet the following standards of applicable adequate landscaping and buffering treatments, stormwater management, erosion and sediment control, lighting, signage, floodplain, and dimension. And that covers all the guidance, the criteria that I can see. <laughs> I think you, you need a motion if you all agree that it complies with the criteria. I'll make a motion that the application meets all the criteria. Special permit criteria. Second. Motion by Doug, seconded by Tim. And the motion is that it meets all the criteria. <clears throat> Any discussion? Hearing none. Goes to roll. Tim Young. Aye. Joe Adeletta. Aye. Doug Porter. Aye. Sid Blodgett. Aye. Jeff Marka. Aye. Mark Blackburn. Aye. 
uh, appears to have passed. So that brings us back to the condition. Do it. Motion to approve September the feast. Was made by Joe and seconded by Tim. Two hundred meet all conditions. No. Okay. He's got good notes. You have a separate group. Do you want me to go over the notes, or maybe not? You may read them. Um, no painting or staining of sheds will be done on site. Overall signage requirements would be observed. Final plan will be modified to exclude the footnote reference no, note number 10. That does not exist. Trees will be relabeled accurately as hickory trees. The monuments will be a concrete material, and that materials area will be removed from the plan. Current materials area will be. The display area language of no more than shed and no more than 1200 square feet, whichever is left, shall be used as an original application. No gravel or materials are to be added to create the new work area. The typical business hour should be eight to five with no operations on the new And any signage requiring permit? Yeah, I'll that's Signage requirements will be observed. Oh, also, okay. require permits. So okay. Any discussion? Anyone? Any other questions? When you said something about the current area, I thought yes. it was to um, add the words to be removed after where it says building supplies. It doesn't say current, it says building supplies. The, the materials. So I put materials, building supplies, area of concrete. Right. Change materials to make these plans. So there'd be a new date on tomorrow, right? Yes. Okay. And it's not going to be in color. It's going to be normal black and white. <laughs> yeah. Well, we do the modifications. Uh, it'll be that the, the final uh, modification date will say approval conditions. And then I'll I have them add the signature block. It has a number of the application and the name of the applicant and then the chairman signature and then the date they come. Any other discussion? Terry Dunn, all goes to the roll. Tim Young. Aye. Jim Rettleweta. Aye. Bill Porter, aye. Sid Blodgett, aye. Jeff Marka, aye. Mark Blackburn, aye. That's so fast. Your time. Thank you. It's a high visibility site. So we're anxious to see. I, I know. Fire. <laughs> Absolutely. Take care. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Norm. I'll make a motion to adjourn. I got it. <laughs> by Doug Ford, second by Tim Young. I'll go through the roll and sit in all the building discussion. Tim Young, I do want to let I go for it. Good logic. Uh, Mark, I am a platform. Hi. That's so passive. Thank you, everybody. I have a good day. I do have a break. I don't know. 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 I